In the morning of the day of the spring festival, during the reign of Denzong, I was awakened by the sound of turtle doves and quails chirping on top of a blossoming plum tree outside my window. After listening to their lovely song, I thanked them by sharing my breakfast with them. This early in the morning, fishermen were already out on their boats, looking for a catch. The sun had barely risen. In order to prepare for the festivities of tonight, I had to buy food and lots of wine. I now walk the newly crowded streets, full of merchants and traders, full of the young and the old, full of people like me, ready for celebration and taking in the sights, smells, and sounds of the market. I got all the food and wine I needed from the row of shops. I've made many friends there over the years. Usually, I spend a lot of time talking to Yu Shu Wei about new things going around our city. Today, we talked about the paper that now paid for anything. What worth is it? You can't eat it. You can't drink it. You can't even make a shelter out of it. The only thing you can do with it is burn it. And yet, it's still valued around the city. What nonsense. Before I started hiking up the mountain to the serene peak, I greeted a few of my good friends. I found Huai Shen, the wisest man I've ever known, hobbling around the city with his cane. He told me news of the new ships, how they could go against the flow of water. Next, I passed by the homeless shelter where my dear friend Lao Yan lived. Although he was ho homeless and only had scraps to eat, he was one of the happiest people I have ever met. He lived off the wonders of the land. He lived off the kindness he sees in people. He lived off the rising of the sun and the moon. He lived off the fresh scenery of the woods and the laughs of babies. Yes. Lao Yan was poor, but in my eyes, he was richer than the emperor of China. Now, the very last stop was to visit my friend Wu Dao Li. He sorted silk at the finest silk store in town, and he was the most hard-working person I've ever met. Sure, he was born into an illiterate family, but he worked all day to make a living to help out his family and he worked all night to teach himself how to read and write the thousands of Chinese characters. He's studying for the civil service examination, a high honor. I truly think he can do it. I look up to him as a father and wish to someday accomplish something with just as much hard work and perseverance. Finally, I start my long hike up the mountain where we meet every spring festival night. Instead of taking the dirt path, I went through the forest. I passed by a bunch of intertwined trees. In my mind, they represented marriage because it showed two lives of two different beings being intertwined into one. As I get higher and higher up the mountain, I start hearing the clear rushing of a waterfall. Not too long later, I see the clear water pouring off the edge of a cliff, sparkling in the sunlight. I hiked for hours more, enjoying the pleasurable sights, sounds, and smells of now, instead of the market, the forested mountain, the howls of not-so-distant monkeys, the songs of various birds the scuttles of ground animals, and the whooshing of the wind through the trees. The forest was orchestrated by thousands of instruments, all playing together in harmony. I walked for a while longer, and it was suddenly dark, cold, and wet. Of course, I had reached the clouds. The songs were quite different here, not so obvious not so loud. I heard a few frogs and a lot of clicking and buzzing from insects. As I walked in the murky silence of the cloud, I felt lonely when I suddenly felt warmth upon my back again. I saw the light of the sun and I saw the peak of the mountain not far from where I was. 
the long journey was finally over. I reached the peak of the mountains, watching the sun set and the moon rise, not seeing the ground below as the peak was higher than the clouds. The pinkish light of an ending day made me glow, and my friends were arriving one by one. We feasted on a glorious meal contributed to by everyone. We danced and sang to our favorite songs. We recited poems from generations before. And we recited poems of our own. The drunkenness swept over us, making us all gay with delight. As the night grew, so did our joy. But slowly, the light of the sun started peeking out behind the edge of the world. And a new day was slowly beginning as we slowly drifted off to sleep one by one. Under the willow trees, cushioned by the soft grass, with the new sun warming our bodies 